Glory to God. <clears throat> so this morning, we greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Those on Facebook, those on the internet, and those who would come on the archive. Oh, my name is Brother Virgil C. Passad. I'm the pastor of the Bride Age Christian Fellowship. We are operating out of uh, <clears throat> Orlando, Florida, United States of America. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. We believe in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we welcome you to uh, our little fellowship this morning. We pray that God is going to bless you. God is going to touch you. God is going to heal you. God is going to anoint you. God is going to quicken his word to you that you could understand the time and the season that you're living in and what to look for in this rapture. Amen. So this morning we like to turn to four portions of scripture. Familiar scripture. Four portions of scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 17. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 17. Praise God. It's four portions of scriptures. If you have a marker. First Corinthians chapter 15. 51 to 55. First Corinthians chapter 15. 51 to 55. Revelation chapter 11. Verses 3 to 12. Revelation chapter 11. Verses 3 to 12. And verses 15 to 19. And verses 15 to 19. Revelation chapter 11. Verses 3 to 12. Verses 15 to 19. Final scripture would be in the book of Revelation. Chapter 19. Verse 7 to 16. Revelation chapter 19. Verse 7 to 16. And many people would ask, Well, Brother Sipasar, why do you read so many scriptures? Well, I really love to read the word. And if you, if you, as we read these scriptures, you're going to see right exactly what the word of God is going to be preached to you today about. Amen? So, blessed be the name of the Lord. So, first uh, Bible reading will be from First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. We read, it's read on this wise. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that he sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain at the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 51 to 55. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 51 to 55. Read on this wise. Behold I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall be changed. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this incorruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory amen praise God when the change of the body O hallelujah when you put on incorruption and you put on immortality. Hallelujah. You shall scream out. O oh, death. Where is your sting? O oh, grave. Where is your victory? And then what happens? The sleeping saints will rise up. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's, let's continue. Next scripture. Reading within the book of Revelation. I'm sorry. What is the other scripture reading? Yes. The book of Revelation. <clears throat> We're reading chapter 11. The book of Revelation, chapter 11. <clears throat> and we want to read from verses 3 to 12. 
and from 15 to 19. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score year, a days clothed in sackcloth, and that's two and three and a half years. These are the two olive, tr olive trees that, and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man shall hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth, and devoured their enemies. And if any man shall hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. For these have power to shut heaven, that it may not rain, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. And have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, and as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit, which we know is Rome, shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, which also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the grave. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, <clears throat> and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, into them, and they stood up on their feet, and great fear, fear fell upon those which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And let's read down to uh, verses uh, um, 15 to 19. And the seventh angel sounded. Now notice, this is the seventh trumpet. And the seventh angel sounded. And there was great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and forever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God and their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned, and the nations are angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, that thou shouldest give rewards unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and to them which fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Uh, amen? And verse uh, 19, sorry. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. And then one more scripture. Revelation chapter 19 verses 7 to, 7 to 16. 7 to 16. The, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come. And his wife had made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true saints of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. And he had his name written that no man knew but he but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth forth a sharp sword, that with it he might smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And, he, and his vesture, and he had his vesture and his tie in name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And of course, if you have your school field, it says, this is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So may God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? 
Heavenly Father, we read your scripture and we already seen and is already blessed, O oh God, by your precious word that proceeded out of your word, Lord. Now, Lord God, Father, we ask of you, Lord, if you would come forth, Lord, and quicken, come out of the pages of the scripture we read, Lord, and quicken it unto your people. Come out of the quotes that we're going to read and quicken it to your people and may your Holy Spirit have preeminence. Have your own way amongst us, we pray. Come down, the Holy Spirit, Lord God, and bless us, Lord, as we sit. Lord, quietness in our spirit to hear from you this morning. Come, sweet spirit, bless us, we pray. Take your servant out of the way, and may you speak to your people in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, we want to continue on our study of the rapture. And this will be our sixth part of that series that we are studying. We will, we, and this, uh, this, uh, the title of our, our exhortation and message today is The Rapture, Part 6, The Trump of God, The Seventh Trumpet. The Rapture, Part 6, The Trump of God, The Seventh Trumpet. Amen. And I pray that um, you all have been blessed with the, the teaching on the, the Rapture. I have learned so many things too about the Rapture and so many little things that was taking place and and what is happening in the rapture, amen. So what is our subject this morning? Our subject, sorry, has always been our Lord Jesus Christ. And our subject this morning is Jesus Christ, our soon coming husband. Jesus Christ, our soon coming husband. Our, our husband to be, amen. And what is our inspiration? Our inspiration of our study for all these messages is what understanding God's promise of the rapture. Understanding. God's promise of the rapture. Hallelujah. And as we've talked about it before, the rapture is not one sudden event. The rapture is a period of time. Amen. We are actually in the rapture now because the rapture is made up of, as we saw, uh, the, the, um, the rapture is made up of, I believe, seven parts of we read in, in um, 1 Thessalonians 4.16, uh, 4, um, 13 to 16 to 17. Amen. The rapture is in seven parts. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God, amen, and we're in one fold of the rapture. Actually, we're between, we're in the second part, what I call, I've divided up into seven parts. I'm div and, and I believe we're in the second part of that rapture. Now, the rapture, Brother Branham says, is a revelation. He says the rapture is a time period. There'll be a rapture in time for the bride. Amen. Now, I quoted a man called William Branham. We believe William Branham is the prophet of this seven church ages, just as John the Baptist. For on the first coming of Christ, William Marion Branham, for on the second coming of Christ. And I can't go too much detail about the prophet. It will take me a whole message. But Brother Branham brought the shout, a message, amen. And what's a, what's a shout? A shout is a message of incite, incitement, to get you uh, excited, amen. And if you need to know more about Brother William Marion Branham, I pray that you look at our website, amen. And our website is uh, it's there on Facebook. Our website you would find on the missions uh, testimony, amen, of 55 minutes, about 13 seconds long, that gives you my testimony and what we believe about Brother William Marion Branham message, amen. And in the days of Brother Branham, when he preached this message, the pillar of fire, the Holy Spirit, the angel of the Lord will move amongst the people. So while he speak these words, these people will be quickened. These people will be anointed. The Holy Spirit go behind these words that Brabham spoke. Now when he spoke these words, signs, wonders, miracles, amen, were, 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 came upon the people. The dead was raised. The sick was healed. The blind see. Amen. Cancer was healed. Amen. What was that? It was God confirming his word. And if we take the same quotes, if we take the same word, and we bring it back unto the people. Amen. What would happen? Amen. God is obligated by His word to come forth and bring forth the same signs, the same wonders, and the same miracles, but most of all, save the people from their sins. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So this morning, hallelujah, we have identified, hallelujah, that there are about seven parts of the rapture. Now there are subparts and all that thing, there were the seven seals, slips in, and sure, but I've, there are seven, seven, I believe, major parts. And I'll quickly tell you what it is. First part is that shout of God. Amen. The shout of the king is in the camp. Amen. And what was that shout? It's a message of incitement to get you ready. Arise! Trim your lamp. 
Get ready. The bridegroom coming. Here's how you have to get ready. Amen. And in between, no. And then in between that, there's a transition period. There's a breach between the shout, amen, and the trump of God. I'm sorry, the shout and the voice of the archangel. The voice of the archangel is when you come to perfection. The voice of the archangel will cry in you. The hope of glory speak that word. And it comes up with power and demonstration. But between the shout and the, and the voice of the archangel, there's a breach. There's a time period. There, and that's where we are now. We are taking the prophet message. We are taking the shout of the king message. And we are living that message. Christ is living in us. Amen. Hallelujah. And then that we are coming to the voice of the archangel. Amen. Which is the third part. And one of the voice of the archangel is that Christ is going to be so much in you that you're going to scream out, Oh, death, where is thy, thy sting? Oh, death, where is thy victory? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Hallelujah. She'll shout that out. The bride will shout that out. Amen. And the sleeping saints going to arise because death can no longer hold them. Oh, hallelujah. Death can no longer keep them in the grave. The sleeping saints shall rise. There will be an earthquake. It will shake this world. Amen. That is the voice of the archangel. And then between the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Hallelujah. The fourth part. Amen. Um, 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 think I'm... Who oh, hallelujah, between, what is the third part? Sorry, the third part is the voice of the archangel. The second part, and, the, and then from the voice of the archangel to the trump of God is out, the fourth part. And what is that voice of the archangel to the trump of God? Where you, co- you have come to perfection. You are speaking the word. Amen. I don't know, this might be a very short period. Because if we type it in the Bible, when the disciples, when Jesus, before he was caught up, he took the disciples up to a mountain. Amen. And he spoke to them. Amen. And he tell him receive ye the Holy Spirit the power of God so after the, he then he was taken up in a rapture with the sleeping saints and he was caught up up and went to the, the sit on the right hand of God but then what happens 10 days afterwards down come the Holy Spirit down come the power down come the anointing down come Christ in you the hope of glory amen so maybe the same thing might happen amen hallelujah oh praise God maybe 10 days I don't know maybe 10 15 days whatever it might be amen hallelujah Hallelujah. And what will happen? Then that voice of the archangel changes, transforms into the trump of God. Hallelujah. So what we talk about between the voice of the archangel, amen, to the trump of God, there's a transition period. There's something taking place. And we could, I mean, I didn't talk about all the details, but we'll talk about it. Right there is that seventh seal. Right there is now between the sixth and the seventh trumpet. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You're between the sixth and the seventh trumpet. Hallelujah. You're between the sixth and the seventh seal. You're in the sixth seal. But the seventh seal, although is open, it has not broken forth. Amen. Hallelujah. Because Brabham says the seventh seal is the coming of the Lord. So then the seventh seal is the rapture. So we are in that seventh seal. But the manifestation of the seventh seal has not yet been delivered. Now, what is that manifestation of that seventh seal? Seven ton living voices, seven thunders uttering his voices. On the earth, amen, after that angel put his foot upon the land and upon the sea, amen. Before he screams, time is no more, seven thunders going to utter his voices. So between the voice of the archangel and between and the trump of God, amen, there's a time period, hallelujah. The bride comes to maturity, amen. Christ in her manifesting the works of Jesus Christ. The sleeping saints already on the earth. Divine healing will be a great thing among the people. The bride will be completely healed. She'll be preaching to the souls that are lost. Amen. She'll be a sign unto the, unto the people on this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Who knows how long it's going to be. Amen. Hallelujah. No one, uh, because the Bible says no one knows the day nor the hour. So I'm just summarizing, summarizing for you, praise God, amen. The earth and the heaven, right between the shout and the, right between, sorry, the voice and the archangel and the trump of God. What has happened? Heaven's emptied out, oh hallelujah. All the sleeping saints are alive upon the face of the earth in flesh, in flesh. What, how do you know that, brother Sipasad? Job said, he said, I know my Redeemer liveth, and do the skin worms eat this flesh? Oh, hallelujah. Yet in my flesh, 
flesh, flesh, amen, 16 elements, I shall see God. But what will happen? Divine healing is going to be a great thing in that time. But in your flesh, you're going to look the same way probably. Again, it's my, it's a, as a study of the, of a student of the word. Amen. But you'll be totally healed. You'll be totally well. You'll be, uh, there'll be no sickness. We are diabetes is gone. Heart trouble is gone. Oh, um, you know, cancer is gone. Cerebral palsy is gone. Oh, whatever it may be, it's gone. Arthritis is gone. Pain is gone. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And that's going to be upon the earth between the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And then the fifth. Oh, what is that fifth part? Amen. The fifth part is the... Gabriel going to come down and blow that trumpet and we're going to talk about that today amen but that fifth part it seems that it goes on for three and a half years amen three and a half years why because the Jews have to hear the gospel trumpet we'll talk about it in a little bit but what is that gospel what is that trumpet also it's a trumpet of war amen it's a trumpet of the feast of the trumpet it's a trumpet of a summons to the wedding supper of the lamb Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And while this trumpet is being sounded, Amen. It's a ding, 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 ding. What are they saying? You know, when Joseph, before Joseph appears, Amen. What happens? They would go to a trumpet person before him and will sound ding, 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 ding. It means to say, Joseph is coming. Joseph is about to make his appearance. Amen. And that seventh trumpet. Amen. That trumpet and Gabriel sound. Amen. What happens? Christ. Amen. The sixth thing happens is that Jesus Christ in that body. Amen. Coming out of Revelation 19. Appears in the sky. Hallelujah. And what happens? Glory to God. Hallelujah. This trumpet remember is still sounding. What happens? The seventh thing is what? We are changed. We are transformed into corruption put on incorruption mortal put on immortality we are changed in the twinkling of an eye we are young again maybe 18, 19, 20 years old and we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air that's the seventh and the final part of the rapture so I just give you a summary of the rapture now you know the, 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 the first part the shout the shout of the king is in the camp is a message brought by brother William Marion Branham and this message what tells you it's a message of incitement amen incitement get ready get ready get ready or oh, put this garment on amen for it's the coming of the Lord and probably the most um, and I spoke about it in a few services ago amen the most the, the probably a good example amen about this rapture amen about the shout the voice the trump what happens in between and then the marriage supper itself what happens there amen we'll preach on the marriage supper later on amen but what, what it's like a old eastern custom Wedding, you invited to the wedding. The invitation come out. The word of the Lord come out. That's a shout unto you. An invitation. Amen. Now in the, in the old Palestinian um, uh, area in, in Israel, in, when, you, when, you, when you're walking down the street, you have a, it's a flowing garment. It's right down to the ground. It's a garment that flows right down to the ground. Hallelujah. Amen. And when this garment flows to the ground, when you walk, it's picking up all the dust and the filth and the, and the, and the dung and the poop and all that is on the camel and cow and whatever. And it's all dirty. Your feet, they didn't have nice tall, tall up uh, shoes in those days. They had leather, so all your toes and all your feet had dung and dirt and dirty. Amen. So, but you invited to the wedding, so you invited to the wedding supper. You invited. So you get a, you get a, you get a, a messenger would come to you. Amen. And said, um, John Doe, you are invited to the wedding supper of the king, so and so and so. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the shout. You're excited. Hallelujah. You're excited. You're getting ready. Hallelujah. Praise God. But you go when you come to that door. And that door is who? Jesus Christ. When you come to that door, praise God. He opened the, you open up that door. Amen. He opens that door. And there, he, there he's standing there. He's a foot wash flunky. What is a foot wash flunky? He come and he take you, do, he take you and he usher you into a room. And what is that room? That room is a 
presence of the Holy Spirit. This is the rapture. So the shout message has come. But now, hallelujah, you're transitioning over to the voice of the archangel. And what is the voice of the archangel? When your body will be totally whole. Your body will be totally clean. You'll be completely healed. So this foot was flunky. In this wedding, he puts you sit on, on a chair or something. And then he takes off your filthy shoes. And then he takes off your garment, maybe. Amen. He takes off your filthy garment. He said, I gave him my filthy garment. He gave me one of white snow, like snow. But here's his foot was flunky. He's down at his knees. Then he's washing you clean. He's passing a cloth all over your body. Amen. That when you were smelling like poop out there, you smelling like dung. Amen. When you were smelling like cow or horse or whatever, and you, you're sweaty and so on, now you start to be clean. So you're clean. Hallelujah. You're clean. And then this foot was flunky. Bring some uh, 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 aloes and, and myrrh and, and, and frank, whatever is the, is the perfume and start to anoint you. Hallelujah. No, you ain't got a new garment yet. No, sir. But you have a new body like. You're a clean body. You're, that's what it is in the voice of the archangel. You're totally well. You're totally clean. You're smelling good. You're looking good. You're getting ready, but you can't go yet into the wedding supper. No, 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 no. You can't go yet. Amen. You need a garment. Hallelujah. And now, Lord, that, that was the voice of the archangel. Now this foot was flunky. Amen. He brings unto you a white garment. Hallelujah. A white garment. And he, you have to put it on. So you take that garment and you put it on. Hallelujah. Now you're smelling like the rose of Sharon. Now you're smelling like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now you like Him. Now you're walking like Him. Now you're talking like Him. Now you're acting like Him. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Now you're clean from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. You're a new person. You're clean. You have a white garment. Hallelujah. And this white garment is the twinkling of an eye. You're changed. You're transformed to be in this rapture. The white garment is at the trump of God. Amen. When this trumpet is sounding, you will have that white garment completely whole I mean and what is this white garment mortal put on immortality amen hallelujah do you remember the bible said there are two things corruption put on incorruption that's when you're clean that's when you're holy that's when you're anointed with a rose of Sharon that's when your body is well that's when you, 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 you will no longer be sick that's the voice of the archangel that's where you hallelujah Christ in you you're not sick amen you look the same way you're not sick you know you know all your sicknesses has left you amen oh hallelujah that's the voice of the archangel but now he gives you a new clothes a new white garment you put this on no you're ready for the rapture no you're ready for the marriage supper and then the doors are open up amen and then hallelujah what happens the, the, the king, the one who invites you, comes and greets you personally. There, soon and very soon, we shall see the king. Soon and very soon, we shall see the king. Hallelujah. There he also, come my son, my, uh, my invite you. Oh, now you'll see my son, sit at the marriage supper. And then we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air to sit with him in the marriage supper. While down on the earth, amen, trials and tribulation, the great tribulation, so that's the summary of the rapture, brother and sister, amen, the shout, amen, what was the shout, amen, the shout of the king was in the camp, hallelujah, and God has shown all the, through the church ages, amen, where he has put poured in his Holy Spirit, where he has, from virtue and knowledge and temperance, on faith you build, virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness, and brother love, brother kindness, and now the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Uh, the rapture, Yuma, um, Arizona, Saturday the 4th of December 1965, paragraph 65, amen, quote Brabanum, but to the church, the bride, the rapture is a revelation to her, revealed to her, that the revelation, the true bride of Christ, will be waiting for that revelation of the rapture. It is a revelation, for revelation is faith. You cannot have a revelation without being faith. Faith is a revelation because it's something that's revealed to you. Faith is a revelation. Faith is something that has been revealed to you. And that's what you understand. End of quote. And that's what you're understanding now, brother. Uh, the six parts of this rapture. Amen. So far, you're understanding the rapture. You're understanding what is to take place. Like I've always said, or somebody probably said it. How can you know what, you lo what you're looking for? How can you, you receive what you're looking for uh, uh, if you don't know what you're looking for? 
Amen. How do I know what I don't know? If I don't know about the rapture, I don't know when it will come. I don't know when it's happened. I don't know what it means. All I could say is rapture. But what does it mean? But so you've got to come to the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man to understand. Come and come and understand the revelation of the rapture. So Revelation chapter 4, Jeffersonville, Indiana, Saturday 31st of December 1960. The last part of paragraph 145. Quote Burbanum. He showed him the church age. That's the show John the Divine in the Isle of Patmos. The church age, the coming of the Jews, the pouring out of the plagues, the rapture, the coming again, and the millennium, and the eternal home of a saved, just as though he lived it right down through the whole thing, and he saw the whole thing. Amen. Tarity of the church age, paragraph 7. The rapture of this church, and he and know that his precious feet wouldn't touch the sinful earth at that time. For as Rebecca rode the camel, and jumped off the camel, right between the house of Abraham, out in the field she went, she met, Amen, O God, and the church will meet our bride in the air, for we which are alive and remain, shall not prevent or hinder those that are asleep, Amen. The sudden secret going away of the church, Jeffersonville, Indiana, Amen, um, the, the 12th of uh, January, 12th October 1958, paragraph, second part of paragraph 33, it will be a universal rapture. It will come with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and he shall and he she shall be caught away secretly. Oh, I love that. The great bridegroom coming and the bride that got herself ready waiting for that secret moment that she doesn't even know herself but she's ready and dressed. Amen. For the secret moment that she doesn't even know, but she's ready and dressed and waiting for it. So here's what we end of quote. Here's what we're talking about a shout. And Brother Branham identify himself in the, as a shout message. Prophet like unto Moses, San Jose, California, Friday the 20th of November 1959, paragraph E4. E4. Quote Brother Branham, this full God, Christian, God, gospel Christian businessman have been one of my great supports in taking me to help fulfill the prompt purpose that I believe the Lord sent me to do. That was to unite the body of Jesus Christ together. It's my purpose to do that. That's what's in my heart to see all of God's children in one accord and with one heart moving on. Then I believe when that takes place, the work will be over. It will be millennium setting. The rapture will come and we're certainly praying and watching and waiting for this time. So I've just read to you some of the quotes about a shout message from Brother Branham. And now the breach between his coming and the church forming in the bride. Question and answers. Number one, Jeffersonville, Indiana, Sunday the 3rd of uh, January 1954, morning service, paragraph 107. Quote Brother Branham, those whom he called he justified. Those whom he justified he glorified. And, ev and every redeemed person in the world this morning that's under the blood of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, hot everlasting life and cannot perish, and is already in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, and shall never come into condemnation. Already redeemed. Isn't that wonderful? See, already redeemed. Setting in heavenly places, now with Christ, and already glorified. Already glorified. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And Brother Bram said in the condemnation by representation. And we believe that there be a church in these last days that will receive both form and latterine. That will be scattered throughout the world in this Laodicea age. It will be a church that's called back to the original faith in God. Till it will be a church that will have Jesus Christ walking in it, manifesting himself. The shout of the king of the, of the, the shout of the king will be in her. So end of course. So what Brother Bram is saying is that uh, there's a transition period. There's a uh, a period, I call it a breach between the shout and the voice of the archangel. And what is going to happen? The bride is going to come to perfection. By what? To receive rapture and faith. She's going to come by perfection. It to come to perfection by receiving seven thunders. Seven voices will be in her. Hallelujah. Rapture and faith. Amen. Will be in her to make her ready for the rapture. The catching away. Amen. Uh, Israel and the church. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Uh, 26th of March, 1953, Thursday. Paragraph 43. Quote Brother Branham. Now God's just now loosening up the church everywhere. Get it in order so that he can get it into the rapture. God to give it rapture and faith before it can go into the rapture. End of quote. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Uh, uh, sir, is this the sign of the end, sir? Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday the 30th of uh, December 1962. Evening service. 
the paragraph 417. Quote Brother Branham, I don't know, I don't know, sirs. It's only honest with you as my brothers. I don't know. What, is it time? The ministry will finish? Has the sounding all over? Is that really them seven thunders fixing to utter out something that the little group that is gathered together will receive rapture and faith? So here Brother Branham saying, you got to have a revelation of the seven thunders to receive rapture and faith. Outside of that, brother, there is no rapture and faith for you, except receiving the revelation of the seven thunders. And we will receive a rapture and faith to go into the rapture when he comes, for we will be changed as quick as those angels come in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and shall be caught up together with those that had sleep to meet the Lord in the air. Rapture and faith. So we got to have, amen, between the, the voice, between the shout, the shout of the king in the camp, to the voice of the archangel. Rapture and faith must be revealed to you. You must have a revelation of the rapture. Amen. You must have Christ in you being formed. Amen. You must have Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, Israel and the church. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Um, paragraph 79. And believe we are on the borderline tonight. I was wondering all about my meetings and things. How I had to cancel them out. I truly believe before the church can have the rapture. It's got to have rapture and faith. We can't even have faith for divine healing. Let alone for rapture and faith. Got to have a faith that will change and quicken this body. And be taken away. I believe there's a church on this road tonight. A power. So what Brother Branham is saying I interject here. He believed that there was a period between the shout message and the voice of the archangel that the church is going to come into the power of the living God. Got to have a faith that will change and quicken this body and be taken away. I believe there's a church on this road tonight. A power of the living God that men will speak the word here and there and it will flash like lightning. And a church is coming out. Not a psychologist, not some of this put on make-believe, but a real, true, genuine, anointed, holy ghost called out church. Amen. Oh, praise God. So we summarize. Again, I showed you the quote. Now we talk on the voice of the archangel. What is the voice of the archangel? At that time, Michael shall stand the great prince. Michael is that voice of the archangel. Brabranham said, what is going to happen? Michael, oh, hallelujah, has something to do with the resurrection. I don't know all the details, brother. All I know is that, hallelujah, that Michael is the voice of the archangel. And Michael is Christ, amen. He, he who is of God. And Christ, amen, stood at the grave of Lazarus and spoke the words, say, Lazarus, come forth. What it was, it was the voice of the archangel. And I believe probably, amen, Michael went down into Hades and brought out, um, brought out, um, Lazarus and brought him out here because what the voice of the archangel because the voice of God spoke amen oh blessed be the name of the Lord and you know the battle has been started before the foundation of the world amen there was this battle uh, amen when God created all his angels to run um, to run the help run the universe amen in the beginning I'm sorry um, not before the foundation in the beginning amen there, so there was war broke out between Michael and Gabriel and what is happening amen the war is continuing now upon the earth and the war will continue until we are out into eternity in the new Jerusalem the war is going to continue after the millennium you know, brother and sister I was telling our brother I said, our brother, I said brother uh, sin continues after the millennium you know he said what he said, you know, what are you talking about Say yes, sin continue after the millennium because the sleep uh, people, the, those who are dead for a thousand years, rise up, and then what Lucifer is loose amongst them, and he deceived them, he deceived them and bring them to to war against um uh, the, the uh, against us after the millennium. We'll talk a little ma bit more about this. We want to concentrate on this voice now. So this voice of the archangel will speak, Amen, Hallelujah. And what will happen? It will say, What? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Oh praise God, hallelujah, for death is swallowed up in victory. Victory in what? Victory is mine. Victory is mine. I say to you, Satan, get thee behind me. Amen. Death, get behind me. More uh, mortality, get behind me. A corruption, get behind me. Hallelujah. Oh, when that voice of the archangel comes up in you, you will scream. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Amen. Hallelujah. And what will happen? Glory to God. Amen. The sleeping saints will rise. Amen. Let me just read that. I want to know. I want to read to make sure I'm saying it correctly. Amen. Oh hallelujah. Oh praise God. Hallelujah. Oh death. Oh death. Where is thy sting? 
O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. There is no more sin. You are perfect. Amen. And the strength of the sin is the law. Be thanks unto God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, the voice of the archangel. Amen. So that's the voice of the archangel. It's a voice that summoned John to come up. It's a voice, amen, that summoned sleeping Lazarus to come up. It's a voice that Jairus' daughter called her from the dead, amen. Amen. Now after that, hallelujah. Oh, there's a, a, what has happened with that voice? It becomes so much in you that your body, amen, your body is completely healed, completely well, because there are two parts we just read. Corruption shall put on incorruption. That's the 16 elements that you're in. That is what Job said. In my flesh I shall see God. Job is not, a, not going to return back with some kind of sickness that he had. No, he's not going to be there. He's going to be totally well. Totally healed. Job, we're going to see Job. 60, you're going to touch him. Amen. 16 elements. Amen. But as the corruption shall put on incorruption. But then there's coming a second part that's going to take place in the trump of God. Hallelujah. While that trumpet is sounding, what's going to happen? Mortal. Hallelujah. Shall put on immortality. And you're going to be changed. Brother and sister, I've just seen this. Amen. A mortal going to put on immortality. And you're going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye. That's when mortal put on immortality. So you see the second part. No, that's the the, 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 the sixth part of the rapture, amen, when mortal put on immort immortality, amen, and we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Did I say the sixth part? Uh, the seventh part, I'm sorry. The sixth part is when Jesus appears, amen, and the sixth, seventh part is that you have a change. That's the, that's the climax of what the whole world has been looking for. That's the climax of what God had in his back part of his mind. What is happening when mortal put on immortality. Amen. Hallelujah. What it is it will come to pass. The saying hallelujah that Jesus Christ is in you. Amen. You are little rainbow color sons and daughters upon the earth. Be on you uh, just like your father way back then. You have a body. Hallelujah. Glory to God of just like your father. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just like the logos, you'll have a body, amen, to go up in the rapture. Because you can't make the rapture in these bodies, brother and sister. These, according to Brabham, they, they're heavy. These bodies are heavy. Amen. Praise God. I don't know if we have enough light. If we, Let's see if uh, it's getting a little bit dark. We could put a little more light. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So now we're talking about, there's a transition now from the voice of the archangel to, to the, the trump of God. And what is that transition? That transition is when, as we talk about, your body is all, uh, you know, healed up. Amen. You're all well. Amen. Not your wrap the robe of the, the, let's read it. The deity of Jesus Christ, Jeffersonville, Indiana. The 12th of December, 1949, Barbara was praying. Paragraph, and last part of paragraph 143. Amen. Praise God. Not try to wrap the old robe around, but wrap the robe of Christ, the Holy Ghost around me, as Paul did, and say, O oh, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Enter the dark chamber among those who are dead, listening then for his voice of the archangel that shall sound, and will be called up from among the dead to meet our loved ones. You see what Brother Abraham said? He identified that the voice of the archangel is going to be in you and you're going to be called up, amen, to meet, the, to meet your, uh, your other loved ones. The voice, the voice of Christ, amen. So we're talking about this is between, this is between the voice to the trumpet. So you're already healed, you're already well, you'll be preaching to the souls that are in prison. And I'm going to skip uh, all, uh, a few of these. Uh, the dead, the sleeping saints will be walking with you. Now how long that's going to be? 30, 40 days, amen, I don't know. But if we go to type out, it wasn't Jesus' days. 30, 40 days, he walked with his disciples, the sleeping saints who are upon the earth, the Old Testament saints who are upon the earth for 30, 40 days. But then after he was caught up, 10 days afterwards, down come the power. Amen. So maybe 10 days afterwards, come the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But you see, you, you say, well, brother, see, are you saying you know the day. No, 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 no. We would not know the day when the voice of the archangel starts. I don't know who would know that day. And when the voice of the archangel starts 30, 40 days, amen, before caught up to meet the Lord in the air, I don't know. Amen. When that voice of the archangel is going to start, nobody's know that day, no time. So we would know. 
But we could estimate and we could say that, you know, 30, 40 days, and after that 10 days, we got up to meet the Lord in the air. So there's transition period. There's a period. The trumpet will sound, amen, and our body will be changed. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So today, let's go. We're going to focus now on the, on the, 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 the trump of God, the seventh trumpet. Amen. The trump of God, seventh trumpet. Now, you've got to see now and understand. Now, this is the sixth part, amen, that we're talking about. And what is a trumpet? A trumpet is a sound. When a trumpet is blown, it's a sound for you to summon to, to, to some great feast. And when the trump, seventh trumpet is sounded, Amen. Brother Abraham said, Gabriel will blow the trumpet. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that seventh trumpet will cause what? Do you all the saints to be united in Christ together? Amen. We all be united with the, with the sleeping saints. And the, re, and the uh, saints are alive and remain. And then we all going to be caught up to the wedding supper. The trumpet is a summons to our wedding supper. Now the trumpet is just going to draw a blast like and that's it. No, if you look closely, the trumpet sounds for about three and a half years, maybe. I'm just seeing. It says a trumpet sound. Why? Because it's beckoning, beckoning the Jews to the feast of the trumpet, to the feast of the atonement, for them to receive the Holy Spirit, for them to see that Jesus Christ died for them. Amen. Died for the whole world. Amen. Praise God. That's what the trumpet is all about. Hallelujah. The trumpet is that seventh trumpet. Amen. Uh, there were six trumpets sounded and they all sounded under the sixth seal. Amen. And what is that sixth seal? This is the pre-tribulation to the tribulation period. Now the sixth seal is a time period that started, at, I don't know exactly when it started, but under the sixth seal, sixth seal, all six trumpets sounded. Actually, all seven trumpets sounded under the sixth seal. But under the sixth seal, if you've got to read the Bible, you'll see where they position this trumpet. Amen. Where they position this trumpet in sound. Hallelujah. Where is position? Now if you notice what comes in between. I mean we'll look at it in a few minutes. But what does this trumpet do? There are, few, there are few things that this trumpet will do. One, it summons the bride to the wedding supper. Number two, it causes the bride to be changed for in the twinkling of an eye. Number three, amen, it summons the Jews. Amen. The Jews to the atonement. By their two prophets, Moses and Elijah. And for three and a half years, there's going to be ministering to them to receive the Holy Spirit. Just as you receive the Holy Spirit, just as the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, they will receive the Holy Spirit. But from the moment the Jews start to receive the Holy Spirit, the bride is gone. Amen. But the, the, the trumpet still sounds. Amen. And under the trumpet is what? In the trumpet, what happens under the trumpet? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Is that seventh seal? A seventh seal. What? The seventh seal is like the seventh trumpet to the Jews. Amen. The seventh seal is opened up. Why? Because on the earth, hallelujah, during that seventh trumpet, on the earth, hallelujah, all believers, all the sons and daughters of God, all the way back to Adama, on the earth, heaven has emptied out according to Revelation 19. Heaven emptied out, and they're now upon the earth. Amen. They're upon the earth. The power of God is upon the earth. And that's why, that's why those seven, um, seven groups of believers from the seven church ages are going to scream out, Hallelujah. They're going to scream out when this trumpet, Amen, Hallelujah. Scream out, Hallelujah. And they will say, what they will say, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? O oh, death is swallowed up in victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Corruption put on incorruption. And just before we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air, mortal put on immortality. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. The trumpet sound. The dead sleeping saints uniting together with one, with uh, the saints that are alive and remain. Amen. Hallelujah. The rapture, Yuma, Arizona, Saturday the 4th of December 1965, paragraph 164, the, uh, paragraph 164, quote Brother Branham, Therefore the message calls the bride together. See, the shout. And then the trumpet. The same one, he with a loud voice, he screamed out, with that shout and a voice and woke Lazarus. You see, notice what, what he said. A shout and then the voice. So wait. So, Jesus, so the Lord Jesus shout and then that voice of the archangel went forth and bring Lazarus forth. Lazarus come forth and the voice wakes up 
Lazarus. No, he didn't say the shout wakes up Lazarus, you know. He said a voice wakes up Lazarus, wakes up the sleeping bride, the sleeping dead. And then the trumpet, with the sound of a trumpet. And when it does, it calls, always a trumpet called Israel to the feast of the trumpet. See, which was a Pentecostal feast, the great feast in the sky, and the feast of the trumpets. And now a trumpet to be announced a calling together. Come to the feast. Now that is the Lamb's Supper in the sky. Amen. Oh, the seven church ages. Jeffersonville, Indiana. The 12th of May, 1954. Paragraph 20, 29. And by God's help, and with a book of history, I can prove to you that we are living at the seventh trumpet for the seventh plague and the seventh seal to be opened and the seventh vial poured out. When the sixth one sounded, you will get on that maybe the stealing away on Friday night when the first world war, the sixth trumpet sounded according exactly to the time God spoke of. So the six, all six trumpets sounded. Amen. The six trumpets sounded. And we are waiting now for Gabriel to step down, to come down with that trumpet, to, 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 to blow that trumpet. Amen. The seventh trumpet. Gabriel is going to blow the seventh trumpet. But Branham said, Gabriel, he uh, ushered the first coming of, he ushered the first coming of Christ. And he's going to usher the second coming of Christ. Amen. The seven church ages. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Wednesday the 12th of May, 1954. Paragraph 140. Actually 141. Trumpet. Quote Brother Brown. Trumpet. Trumpet is an announcement. Gabriel, at the coming of the Lord, shall sound the trump of God. This was God's trumpet blowing. In other words, he is fixing to announce the eternal destination of the world. A trumpet. What is it? Get ready. I'm going to give you the revelation of Jesus Christ to give to the church. I'll speak to you. What will be the destination of the world for those who receive, those who are elected? A trumpet of God. Attention! Every man, when the trumpet blows, he grabs his sword and stands to a place. Listen. Attention. The trumpet. Paul said if a trumpet gave the uncertain sound, if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who will shall prepare for war? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to show you in the scripture where the seventh trumpet. Now, we, I'm going to make that statement. The seventh trumpet is the trump of God. Is one trumpet. That but when it's blown, it's blown for the bride, for the bride beckoning the bride to the wedding supper. Beckoning the bride for that change of the body in a twinkling of an eye. But that seventh trumpet is also the trumpet to the Jews. The trumpet to the Jews to beckon them into the feast of the atonement. The seventh trumpet is to tell them, Come, Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. And then that sub -trumpet, seventh trumpet is the voices of these two, these two messengers, Moses and Elijah, preaching the gospel to the Jews so that they will receive the Holy Spirit. And this trumpet continues on. But under this trumpet, here it is, what has happened? The seventh seal, broken, uh, it's already open, but it's broken, and its contents is upon the earth. What is the seventh seal? Revelation chapter 8, verse 1, oh, There was silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. All the angels are looking down upon the earth. What is taking, up on, uh, taking place upon the earth? We could, Brother Abraham said, the, the seventh seal is the coming of the Lord. The seventh seal is the rapture. But what is the coming of the Lord? Revelation chapter 19. He's riding on a white horse. Now his foot is not going to come upon the earth, but all the saints are going to, is emptied out of heaven. Here would the Bible say, all, all, everybody, every human being, every son and daughter of God, came out of heaven, empty. Nobody's there except angels. And they are in so much awe. Or what is happening upon the earth? They have seen Christ be made manifest. They little, they seen little rainbow spirit men and women walking upon the face of the earth. Face of the earth, a live voice. That's what they seen upon the earth. That's the, se the the seven seal brother and sister, and the trumpet is sound. Here is here what we say here: <clears throat> the feast of the trumpet. And I'm going to read a lot of quotes from that. Jeffersonville, Indiana. I'm just going to read it once, and you could take note: the feast of the trumpet. The 19th of July, 1964, morning service, Sunday. <coughs> Paragraph 135. Now notice, program. now notice, the trumpets that we are speaking of is a call together for either a feast, for war, for a person, some sacred day or something like that. Notice, you say for a person, 
Yes. Amen. For or for the year of Jubilee, announcing the coming of freedom. Paragraph 137. Therefore, when the trumpet sounds, you see something in the earth today. There is a great trouble somewhere. Everybody knows it. Everybody has become an erotic. The whole world is an erotic world. And we know there is something wrong. The Pentagon everywhere, we know that there is something wrong. And paragraph... <coughs> Paragraph 144, now this calling of the Feast of the Trumpets, the approaching of something. What it was? Notice, Revelation 8, 7. Now we notice the first trumpet scattered hail and so on, and uh, people went an exodus. And the, reason, and the reason that these seven trumpets doesn't have really apply to the church and this age is because it's through Israel only. But remember, we just noted that last sounding trumpet Although it's for Israel only, uh, the seven trumpets for Israel only, we also hear the sound of the trumpet as a beckoning to the wedding supper. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Here. Now the, uh, the beginning, Paragraph 137. Now the beginning of Israel is the trumpets. The trumpets is to gather Israel. Notice, the very first trumpet sound, blood, fire, hail, everything scattered the ground. See, what is he doing? Bringing Israel out of spiritual Egypt. Come back to the homeland. Now let me say this right here. Every trumpet that blowed, blowed under the sixth seal. We'll get to it in a few minutes. When we caught the seal here. All trumpets sounded under the sixth seal. Because the seventh seal, there was silence. No one knew. That was the minute of hour that God, Christ would come. But Abraham just revealed it to us. As he revealed it to us. Now, paragraph 115. Now, every trumpet sounded under the sixth seal, under the persecution of the Jews. Notice, Revelation 8, when the seventh verse, all was calling of Israel, natural, in Egypt. Now, it's calling Israel in the spiritual sense. He's making them ready to come to the Feast of the Atonement. Notice, the Feast of the Trumpets was first, which was Pentecost. The Feast of the Atonement followed 50 days afterwards. Oh, is that interesting? The Feast of the Atonement, read it here. We'll probably, if we have time, we'll refer it to you and read it to you out of the Bible. Oh my, this is wonderful. Are you saying that the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out after that 30, 40 days that we walk with the, with the sleeping saints upon the earth? But brother, do we have some part to play in this gospel going to the Jews? They're going to see Christ in us. Amen. And they're going to say, to, you know, that's what we were looking for. But it's not for them yet. Is for the bride. Hallelujah. Would we would we be in Israel? I don't know, brother. Would we be subs? Would we be supporting Moses and Elijah in Israel? Preaching unto them the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Brother Abraham said, The Jews brought the gospel to the Gentiles. The Jews brought the baptism of the Holy Ghost to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles will take the baptism of the Holy Ghost back to the Jews. The Gentiles will take the, 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 the gospel back to the Jews. We have a part to play. We don't know yet, but it's going to be revealed to us, brother. Because what? We're in the revelation of the rapture. That's what we are in right now. A revelation of the rapture. Amen. Notice the Feast of the Trumpet was first. That was Pentecost. The Feast, feast of the Atonement followed 50 days afterwards. The Feast of the Atonement. Read it here. You'll probably, if we have time, we'll refer to it and read it to you out of the Bible. Here in Leviticus 12. No. Oh, sorry. Leviticus 23, rather. And Leviticus 16. We find that the first was the Feast of the, the, the Trumpets, was the Atonement. And after it followed Pentecost. And then we find out the Feast of the Atonement followed the Feast of the Pentecost. Amen? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Paragraph 155. Now notice. Exactly the continuity of the scripture, exactly the same under the seventh trumpet, is to Israel the same as the seventh seal to the church. Yeah, Brother Abraham said it. Yeah, Brother Abraham said it. The seventh trumpet to Israel is as the same seventh seal to the, to the church. We find under the seventh seal that when these souls that were under the altar that received robes, they were given robes, not that they earned them. Because they were in the dispensation where God was still dealing with grace with the Gentiles. Not Jews. Israel is saved as a nation. God deals with Israel as a nation. Gentiles is a people for His name. Not a nation for His name. Amen. Paragraph 158. Amen. He continued talking about the persecution to the Jews. Paragraph. Now remember we just talked about the seven trumpet. 
is the seventh trumpet to the Jews, but it's also the trumpet. Gabriel blows it. And he blows the trumpet. It's, a, it's both for Jews and, and Gentiles. But the seventh trumpet is the seventh trumpet for the Jews. But for us, it's the trump of God for the resurrection, for the change of body, to meet the Lord in the air. That's what it is for us. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Paragraph 158. It's been a bitter persecution against Israel because it's been the time calling him back to the atonement. He's still under the atonement of a natural lamb. The real lamb of God is the atonement and he has rejected it, Israel. And the blood has been upon him ever since. Notice, making ready the people. How perfect them, then the seventh trumpet and the seven seal is. Perfectly together, the persecution of the Jews. Oh, hallelujah. Paragraph 164. And they were loosed upon the Jews. Amen. We talk about the, the, the 200,000 evil spirits. Amen. That was loose under the sixth seal. Amen. And, uh, they were loosed upon the Jews. Amen. Hallelujah. And they were persecuting the Jews. What it was, it was bound on the Roman. It came from pagan Rome. But it came, but it's under Roman. Roman becomes like Christian theology. Oh, and they had worship and holidays. But now there's no more, um, no more, uh, uh, more morality. The church is not even recognized themselves as the church. They feel there's some power. And these 20, these are 200,000, thousand demons were loosed upon the Jews. Amen. Here it is. They were loose upon the Jews who know nothing of the Spirit. There's your mystery that's hidden, that's hid under the seal there. See? Notice. We went through it and I'll show you this trumpet here. That is last trumpet. What takes place? There they are. These trumpets are let loose on the Jews. Don't you see it? Not the Gentiles. The Gentiles, when them seals are open, is sealed away. Time is ended. The church is called. Paragraph 222. See the atonement? Before watch, the atonement called the trumpet sound. Sorry, the atonement followed the trumpet sound. See how beautiful. The atonement, they followed the trumpet. Now 50 days of the trumpets. Ah, hallelujah. You see what Brother Abraham say? See what Brother Abraham say? It's just not one blow of the trumpet. It's 50 days of blowing the trumpet. 30, 40 days while the saints are upon the earth. For mortal take, carrying on to immortality. And then 10 days after that, amen, the, the, the Jews, for the Jews. 50 days of blowing that trumpet. Oh, glory to God. Here's the word. It's opening up to us, amen. Brother, I pray that you see it, sister, amen. And, the, and now the 50 days of the trumpet for us symbolizes when the trumpet sounded at Pentecost, which was 50 days. Now after this, the Jews rejected that. Now the trumpet is to call them back to the atonement. See, the atonement they already rejected. The Jews, they rejected so our eyes would be open. The ears were closed. And during these times, these seals opened up and the trumpet blown. And now in the blowing of the trumpet, just before the Messiah comes, because they were got to be in Palestine. And you remember, God had to harden Pharaoh's heart to run them out of Egypt. And he hardened Stalin, Stalin, Mussolini and all of them to get them back into the promised land where the 144,000 is supposed to be. End of quote. Hallelujah. What have we seen? We've seen seven trumpets were sounded under the sixth seal. But that seventh trumpet is yet to come be when, when Gabriel starts to blow the trumpet. Amen. When he blows that trumpet. Amen. Now that trumpet has to be blown for, from what we've seen here, 50 days. Hallelujah. Trumpet. But under that trumpet, what happened? The seventh seal already opened up. The sleeping saints on the earth. Power and authority is in the sons and daughters of God. They're speaking the word 30, 40 days. Flash like lightning. Preaching unto the souls of that prison. Showing the world. Showing Israel. Showing the Jews. That Christ in me the hope of glory. You see the Jews must see example seed sons upon the earth. Not just the prophet Moses and Elijah. But the Jews must see example seed manifested sons and daughters of God. They're going to look at you. They will they be looking for... They're looking for... They don't, they, they're look, not looking for a, a, a man in Palestinian garment. Probably they're looking for that. But the only Christ they're going to see is the Christ in you. Amen. So you're going to shine. Amen. And you're going to shine so much for this 30, 40 days that the Jews, the whole world is going to see Christ in you. The hope of glory. <coughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> <coughs> Praise God. Let's just read. Hallelujah. A feast of the trumpet, of course, paragraph 226. Quote Barbara. Now notice quickly, Revelation 9, under the seventh trumpet, 
Their king is from the bottomless pit. Then in Levit- Leviticus, now, how perfect the interpretation is here with the word. Because he immediately following the Pentecostal Jubilee, followed the Day of an Atonement, the order of the feast time, between the Pentecostal feast to the atonement, the sound of the trumpets for the atonement, was the Pentecostal feast, the long period of time. Look, there was a long period of time between the Pentecostal feast to the calling of the trump, the sounding of the trumpets, the trumps to be sounded. A long period of time. Frankly, it was 50 days from, the, from when the Feast of Pentecost to the Feast of the Atonement was 50 days. Now, 50 days is exactly seven Sabbaths. Amen. Paragraph 242. The big 50 days has passed over. The Pentecostal Feast has passed over. Seven Sabbaths till the trumpets, a type of the seven church age. Paragraph 243. The Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit has been bound by these denominational rivers for almost 2,000 years, but is to be loosed in the evening time by the evening light messenger. The Holy Spirit back in the church again. Christ Himself revealing in human flesh the evening time. He said, He promised it. Amen. And what is that, brother? It is, and of course, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Jews are going to see it. The world is going to see it. The Gentiles are going to see it. They're all going to see the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, living in you. You are Mrs. Jesus Christ. You're going to scream out the word of God. Amen. Your testimony. Amen. As you preach to the souls that are lost. Souls that are in prison. Souls that refuse to accept the Holy Ghost. You're going to tell them, Jesus Christ is living in me. The power of the Holy Spirit is in me. You, re- you did not repent when, when, when it was offered unto you. You rejected the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then you're lost. You're going to die in the tribulation period. But you're going to raise up back after a thousand years. We're going to preach to the souls that are lost. Amen. The souls that are going to die in the tribulation period. Amen. <clears throat> and also for those that the, the, the church that has to go through the tribulation period, they must receive something. Amen. To help them go through the tribulation period and give their life for Christ. What they would receive? They're going to see Christ in you, the hope of glory. They're going to see what they have missed. And they're going to cry and repent. Amen. And repent. Amen. And God. Amen. Go let them give their life. Amen. Hallelujah. And then come up after the millennium. Uh, let's read. <coughs> praise God. This, uh, praise God. This is um, paragraph 240, 245, last part. This is to be between. Okay, let's read uh, paragraph 245. When finished at the Laodicean age, according to Revelation 10, the mystery of all the Bible will be know, made known to the bride. Is that right? Revelation 10. Now listen close. Bride called out by the word. Christ himself calling out the bride. Making plans. Hebrews 13.8. That's the, he is the same yesterday, today and forever. Does the same. Is the same. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. See? Luke 17.30. And also Malachi 4. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 All the scriptures that's promised This is to be between the 6th and the 7th seal And the 6th and the 7th trumpet See? That's the transition between the voice before, Between the shout, of the, camp, uh, the shout of the king in the camp And the voice of the archangel Amen Between there That's where it is Hallelujah Pentecost feast finishes at the period of the 7th trumpet for the next is the seventh seal. For the coming, for the next is the mystery of the coming of Christ. And also, the trumpet is sound for the Jews. There's, there are six trumpets sounded. And when it does, it makes them known to, make known to them the revealed Son of God. One half hour of space. Remember, all trumpets sounded on the sixth seal. The sixth seal finishes the mystery under the sixth seal just before the seventh is open. Paragraph 253. Now notice. They know that their Messiah, when they see Him, He's coming in power. See? Hold on one second. Let's interject here. He is coming in power. And where is that power is going to be, brother and sister? It's going to be in you, the member, the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Jews are going to see you. Amen. Christ in you. Let's read it again. Because He's coming in power. Hear what it says. Now notice, they'll know their Messiah. When they see him, he's coming in power. This time, the one they look for, he's coming in power for the Gentile bride. And the Jews are going to recognize him. Amen. So continue the quote. And between this paragraph two, um, uh, 266. Uh, now in between the sixth trumpet 
and the, the six seal sound the six trumpet and the six seal sounds at the same time and between the six trumpet and the seven trumpet there's a prophet to appear before the Gentiles in other words the shout of the king to call the people back to the original Pentecostal doctrine and the two witnesses of Revelation 11 appears to the Jews to send them back to Jesus while the church is being taken up all of them prophets notice the word of the Lord can be broken it cannot be a denomination see you see it paragraph 267 second part of it here let's just read the whole thing read in your book here now you got to understand the chronology of the Bible what is placed in where what is put in where now between the six and the seven trumpet what happened you got to read your Bible I can't read all the details for you right now but um, if you have a Schofield you'll see more details because it gives you it gives you um, you know um, no, the first, the, the 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 sixth trumpet is in Revelation chapter eight, but but the bride was taken up, amen, in Revelation chapter four on the four at the end of the fourth, at the end of the fourth seal. Amen. I'm sorry, at the end of the the, the, church, the church age, the bride was taken up, amen. But then now let's see in between, in between the sixth. Um, when he had opened the fifth seal, let's see the sixth seal. He, uh, he opened the fifth seal, opened the, oh, the sixth seal. Now, if you notice, when he, op when he opened that sixth seal, if you look in the book of Revelation, chapter 6, the sixth seal is open. But then what do you see? Tribulation period, the, the 144,000 called out, and we move on to uh, Revelation 8. And when Revelation 8, he said when he opened the seventh seal, now the sixth seal is still going on. He placed the seventh seal in the sixth seal. And the sixth seal time period is still going on. Now the seventh seal is open. And what has happened? Open in that, in, during the sixth seal, seven trumpets. Revelation chapter ten, 8, verse, uh, from verse 2. You see the, the uh, uh, Revelation chapter 9, the fifth trumpet and the sixth trumpet. And then it stops. Between now the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet, what? You see a mighty angel come down from heaven with a, with a book in his hand and seven thunders out of his voices. Time is no more. What is that? Between that sixth and the seventh trumpet. Hallelujah, which is the voice of the archangel. So the, between the sixth and the seventh trumpet is that voice of the archangel. And then let's continue on. And then there's the three woes. And then, uh, and then uh, it tells you about uh, Israel and the church in the tribulation. And in Revelation 13 tells you about... Um, and Revelation 13 tells you about a beast out of the sea. And then it goes on the beast out of the earth. And then the 144,000. All is still the sixth seal. On this on the sixth seal. Between the sixth and the seventh trumpet. Amen. Seven trumpets sounding. And then, and then um, the vials. And then the sixth vial and the seventh vial. And then all. And then we have to find out. Uh, and then where we find now. Um, <coughs> Praise the name of the Lord. I, I have to find exactly. We read in Revelation chapter 19. And in Revelation 19, here it is. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, the doom of the kings. I'm trying to find out exactly um, where he sounded that seventh trumpet. We just read it, didn't we? Oh, Hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Where did we read that? Um, I think we read it in the six, the, uh, in Revelation chapter 11. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 11. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. I mean, you've got to read the chronological. Oh, yes, there it was now. After the Second World War, which I could say was the Second World War, happened, seventh, the seventh angel sounded. And after the seventh angel sounded, then you saw all uh, Israel in the tribulation, the beast out of the sea, and the beast out of the earth, and the vision of 144,000. All that is taking place under the seventh trumpet. Amen? So let's just read here what Brother Branham says. Here. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's just read here. <coughs> Praise God. Uh, Feast of the Trumpet, paragraph 267. Now read in your book here, and see if that between the 6th and the 7th trumpet isn't injected here. 
let the Jews be called out between the sixth and the seventh plague. We, we come out to the 144,000. Remember that? And that was between that. Do you remember? The sixth, the fifth and the sixth seal. Between the sixth seal and the seventh seal, there was a calling out of the 144,000. You remember that? And there's where those trumpets come right in. See? The persecution, the horses loose on there. Then between that, there was a seventh angel messenger that has been preaching and condemning the Pentecostals and Jesus had been put out, wouldn't have no cooperation with nobody, to be out on the outside, rejected. The Bible said so, for it's Christ made manifest among us. Jesus among us made manifest in the purity of his word, making it known. If that's it. It's not just some make-up things, friends. Abraham said, this is thus saith the Lord, the scripture. And at the same time, as soon as the church, the bride, is drawn together, she's taken up. And the mystery of the seventh seal, or the seventh seal, the mystery of going. And the Jews is called by the mystery of the seventh, tongue, seventh trumpet, which is two prophets, Moses and Elijah. And they come back. And there is where the Pentecostals get all mixed up. They're looking for something to happen. The church is done gone. And that's to the Jews. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. End of quote. So what are we saying? That Gabriel blows that trumpet. Amen. Gabriel blows that trumpet. Let me just read for you what Brother Barnum says here. Testimony, Los Angeles, California, Wednesday the 9th of May, 1951. He's, uh, he's praying here now. Um, he's praying. He said, Oh, eternal God. Now, let me just read the whole prayer. It says something great here about the United States, but we turn against the Lord. Here, Brother Barnum say, praying. Paragraph E19. Prayer, Brother Barnum. Lord, we ask tonight to bless our nation, the most greatest and powerful nation of the world, the Joseph of Jacob's blessing, who is made us both strong and trusted in the might of God. But we know it's time for the vine to come down over the wall again now and realize that we are at the end of the age. And this great marvelous nation started out a few years ago to forsake God as a hog goes to his wallow and a dog to its vomit, bringing in whiskey and putting it on the street corners and putting our young girls and boys in the bar room and bringing the vulgarity out of Hollywood here the nest and depths of sin. O oh, eternal God, what else we would expect but judgment? When mercy is overstepped, then judgment must come. And God, I pray that you'll draw your people together with the cords of love and bind their hearts together. That soon, when that Gabriel walks to the great banisters of eternity and sounds that trumpet, they are approaching Christ. May your church become together and go up in the air to meet you before those great judgments shall blast the earth with the curse of God, who have mercy, dear, oh, dear God. End of quote. Hear what he says again here. Believe us now this. Minneapolis, Minnesota, Sunday the 16th of July, 1950. Paragraph E31. Quote, Prabhupada. Now notice, now when everything is going to happen on the earth, first, God sends a messenger, and that messenger is anointed by an angel. How sometimes minor angel comes, there are minor angels and major angels. Now this angel that came was Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. That was something major. And he come down. And when Gabriel comes from heaven, now notice, Gabriel is coming down from heaven. Remember, something's going to happen. Gabriel announced the first coming of Jesus. Gabriel had announced the second coming of Jesus. The trump of God shall sound. First, an angel. End of course. So what he's saying here? Abraham say, Gabriel is going to come down with the trump of God. Amen? And there's another quote he says, when you see Gabriel come, when you, when you see Gabriel appear, you know it's some, uh, it's, uh, something's happening. Amen. Look, he says, when Gabriel comes from heaven, remember, something's happened. Resurrection of Lazarus, Erie, Pennsylvania, Sunday the 9th, uh, 29th of May, 1951, paragraph um, even afternoon service paragraph E41, quote Prabhupada, notice that they had it all figured out, just how it was to be. But God has never had himself, left himself without a testimony before the coming of Jesus. Let's take God, send Gabriel down from glory. Now you can hear of minor angels coming. But when Gabriel comes, something major on the road. When Gabriel comes, he's the archangel. There's something great fixing to happen. Listen. Gabriel announced the first coming of Christ. And Gabriel announced the second coming of Christ. There you are, for he will sound the trump 
of God, all right. Amen. Expectations. Amen. End of quote. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let's just read. He says expectations. Amen. Praise God. Cleveland, Ohio. Thursday, the 10th of August, 1950. He was telling you about the difference between the Holy Spirit and when that angel come. He said, when the Holy Spirit come, you feel so happy. You're such joyful. You worship in the Lord. A sweetness come over your soul. He said, but when that angel comes, it's a, there's an awesome power around him. It's a sacred August being. There's a difference. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Amen. Hear what Brother Bram say. Brother Bram say in paragraph, last part of paragraph E6. That's the truth. The Holy Ghost leads the church. That's true. But there's ministering spirits sent from God. Special gifts, friends. Now let me ask you this. You all know that. John the Baptist, he was a Christian. Or a holiness man. Amen? Do you believe so? A Holy Ghost man. He was born from his mother's womb full of the Holy Ghost. But it was an angel that came down and announced his birth. Gabriel. Is that right? Before Zacharias. Mary. Gabriel came down again. Now angels come to people. But when Gabriel comes, it's something major. See, Gabriel will announce the second coming and sound the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise, end of quote. Now, I don't know how it's going to happen, brother. I don't know how it's going to be. Is he physically we going to see him? I don't know. Amen. How he's going to appear? How he's going to sound his trumpet? The voice of the archangel is Christ in you. Now this trumpet sound, Brother Abraham say, is the message coming from these two prophets. Could it be that Gabriel himself, amen, hallelujah, will anoint these prophets with that trumpet and angel message, amen. He will anoint them. Could it be, could it be all us also, hallelujah, because we are part of the rapture. I don't know, brother. I'm just saying, could it be we'll be anointed, just we'll be anointed with the voice of the archangel. We'll be anointed with the trump of God. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you fire on that, we'll be anointed with the trump of God as a testimony to the souls that are lost, as a testimony to the Jews. Could it be that we might be anointed? With the trump of God, hallelujah, that anointing of Gabriel, amen, that angel that's whispering in ears to speak it, just as Michael, amen, uh, the voice of the archangel, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just read paragraph E7 from the same book. <coughs> amen. Praise God, amen. Oh, I think I read this already. The seven church ages. <coughs> Um, uh, paragraph, uh, vo um, paragraph 140 I want to read this again he was in the spirit that was John the spirit come upon him he began to see things now watch I was in the spirit on the Lord's day heard I got in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a great voice of a trumpet 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 is an announcement Gabriel at the coming of the Lord shall sound the trump of God this was God's trumpet blowing in other words, he's fixing to announce the eternal destination of the world. A trumpet. What is it? Get ready. I'm going to give you the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm going to give to the church. I will speak to you. What will be the destination of the world for those who receive and those who reject it? And who is going to bring this? And end of quote. Who is going to bring this? Amen. Who is going to bring this? It's the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. A trump of God. A trumpet of God. Attention. Every man, when the trumpet blows, he grabs his sword and stands to place attention. The trumpet. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So when God goes to do anything, he sends forth a messenger. So the trump of God. So we definitely have to know that we in the trump of God. Amen. We will know. Like how, like how we know right now, we in that, uh, the breach between the shout of God, shout, of the, uh, the king of in the, in the camp and the voice of the archangel. We know we're in that little breach. We know we come into perfection. And there'll come a time when the voice of the archangel manifests in us. And then there's that point of time, the transition over from the voice of the archangel to the trump of God. Oh, it's the bride. She's going to manifest us the trump of God. Hallelujah. Why? She'll have a voice. She'll be the final voice to the final age. Glory to God. She will be him. She's Mrs. Jesus. She's bone of his bone. She's flesh of his flesh. She's spirit of his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. She, uh, the trumpet is always a gospel trumpet. 
Could it be that the bride is going to sound this gospel trumpet? The Jews will see a manifestation of the power of God in you for 30, 40 days. Amen. Before that 10 day period when they shall receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm only typing what I see in the Bible, brother. <coughs> Amen. Typing. God's preparation. Louisville, Kentucky. Thursday, the 1st of April, 1954. Paragraph E27. Quote, Barabanam. And so when God goes to do anything, he always sends forth a messenger. A messenger bears record to some individual. And that individual carries out the word. Now when God's fixing to do something major, he comes, he always sends a great angel. For instance, Gabriel. Gabriel announced the first coming of Christ. Did you know that? And Gabriel will announce the second coming of Christ. That's right. He'll sound the trumpet. Time will be no more. So we're looking for that, brother. Now you're understanding. Understanding what, brother? You're understanding the revelation of the rapture. You understand that there are seven parts to this rapture. You understand that, oh, the shout of the king was in the camp. The first part, the shout of the king was in the camp. You understand that, brother. You understand, hallelujah, that there's a transition between the shout of the king and the voice of the archangel. You understand that you have to come to perfection. And then you understand that the voice of the archangel is Christ in you. is so formed in the bride. Dynamics has come to your mechanics. You become, she becomes a word. Divine healing is upon her. Her body is clean. It's, it's changed in the sense that you're no more sick. Amen. All these Parkinson's disease will leave you. Amen. You'll be well. Hallelujah. And that's thus said the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's the voice of the archangel. The word of God is going to be in your mouth. You'll speak the word. It flash like lightning. And what is going to happen? Amen. What is going to happen? Oh, you're going to scream out one day under the power of God. Under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You're going to see, scream out, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? For death is swallowed up in the victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Every sleeping saints, rise up out of the ground. Amen. California is going to shake. California is going to crumble and sink into the sea. And the sleeping saints are going to rise up. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Brother, you're going to come to that point by the voice of the archangel when you shall speak that. Amen. And the sleeping saints shall arise. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Destruction is coming, amen, upon the earth. And after that, there's a, there's a, the voice of the archangel. Oh, and then there's a transitioning from the voice of the archangel to the trump of God. Oh, glory to God. And that trumpet is the bride comes to maturity. Christ in her manifesting the works of Christ. Amen. And that Gabriel is sounding the trumpet. You know what sounding? You say the coming of the Lord is near. The coming of the Lord is near. The coming of the Lord is here. Look, I'm changed. I'm transformed already. I'm no longer sick. I have no longer diabetes. Uh, uh, Brother Abraham say divine healing is going to be a great thing. Around that time, no more sickness, no more cerebral palsy, no more, uh, you know, all these other things that, are, that afflict you, cancer, uh, or what, leukemia, and, and uh, whatever this COVID thing that is afflicted, oh, hallelujah, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, swallowed up, why? Jesus paid the price in Calvary. Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. And Jesus Christ, that spirit, that seventh spirit of God, that is embodied in the logos, that Holy Spirit is living in you. Amen. Live in me, Lord. Live in me. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So then, brother and sister, the voice of the archangel, transitioning over now, to the, the, the trump of God. It is a transition period. And then the trump of God. Hallelujah. Oh Gabriel blew in that trumpet. Beckoning you to the wedding supper. You have to come to the wedding supper. We don't have much longer. We are 30, 40, 50 days. 30, 40 days. Come to the wedding supper. But before you come to the wedding supper. Demonstrate the power of God upon the earth. Demonstrate the manifestation of the sons and daughters upon the earth. Let the world see that Jesus Christ is alive once more. And he's alive in you. Living upon the face of the earth. Oh, it's going to happen to you, brother. Repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of God. And that's when Gabriel sounding the trumpet of God. Amen. Gabriel sound the trumpet the fifth time. Gabriel, fifth part of the resurrection. What happened? Oh, at the end of the... Uh, while this trumpet is being sound, 
the, our Lord and Savior, our King, our Bridegroom, our Husband to be appears in the sky. And while His trumpet has been sounding, oh glory to God, while He's appearing in the sky, our body is changing in the twinkling of an eye. We are changing the twinkling of an eye. Oh hallelujah, and that's the last part of the rapture. We are changing the twinkling of an eye. Immortal, mortal put on immortality. Oh, we change and we caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Before any bomb could strike the earth, the bride will be gone. Uh, praise God, hallelujah. That's what Brother Abraham say. Let's just read. Will the church go before the tribulation period? Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday the 9th of March, 1958, evening service. Paragraph E24. Quote, Brother Abraham, I want you to notice this. Because we have to cut short here at the count of the prayer line. And I'm coming close to the end of the service. Um, this is my closing quote. What was it? Message of deliverance. Before one speck of fire could fall from heaven, Lot had to get out of Sodom. And before one drop of rain fall from heaven, Noah went into the ark. And before the atomic bomb can strike this nation, the United States of America, the church will go in the rapture and meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, last part of paragraph 24. And, uh, and before the fire fell, Lot was out of Sodom. For the angel said, I can't do nothing until you come hither. I, go, I, I got the lever in my hand to pull and make the fires fall from heaven. That's the angel. And I think that's exactly the angel of destruction is holding the hand of Russia with the atomic bombs until the church come together as one great body of Christ. I can't do nothing until you uh, come out hither. The, uh, amen. Straight is the gate. Jeffersonville, Indiana. The 1st of March, 1959. Paragraph 164. The hour is at hand. Quote, hour is at hand. Every sensible person that got reasoning knows that something fixing to happen. There's not a person in this building that got his mind right but knows that this world cannot stand under these conditions. We can't stand friends. Amen. You say, what about the mark of the beast? That is to come in the tribulation period. The church will be gone then. Don't, won't have to mark those. He's talking about a physical marking. Those don't go on. See, the marking is going on now. Now people say this is Brother Abraham contradicting himself. No, there are two markings. There's a physical marking that is going to do something to you. Amen. Physical identify you. It's in you. It's in you. Amen. Physically. But then there's a spiritual marking, which is a mark of the beast, which is a rejection of the Holy Spirit and the message of the hour. Amen. Hear what Brother Abraham say? Amen. Hallelujah. Who oh, he said? Well, he said, what about the mark of the beast? That's to come in the tribulation. The church will be gone then. We won't have to mark those. These, those done gone. See? The marking is going on now. The marking is the showing forth. The brand. You see? The brand. Flee to God. Flee to Him quickly. Amen. What was the Holy Ghost given for? Jeffersonville, Indiana. Thursday, the 17th of uh, December, 1959. Paragraph 51. We are in that day. But here, there isn't, they weren't even as smart as today. They couldn't make an atomic bomb or ultimately talking about the late the days of Jesus. They didn't have science and things like we have and the things now. To try to say to a man, blow up some dust and so forth. And take some analysis and try to prove it to, to make infidels of the people. But now, when we need it, the Spirit of God raises a standard. What is it? He's pouring in His Spirit. Then those who are resting out yonder in the grave or under the altar of God, as the scripture says, are crying, how long, Lord? How long? How much longer? God's waiting on me and you. The church is, uh, the church is waiting on me and you. Adoption time. When God can pour into His fullness, His power, His resurrection, that when the church and Christ become so close together, till Christ become visible among us and raises the dead and we go in the rapture. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus is so close to coming to the earth now until His powers begin to catch the people and winding them up, getting them ready for the, bri the, the bride, getting them ready to be caught up in the rapture. A church that will just fit just exactly to be taken up. Power, through its power, will draw all the rest of them that's born again out of the earth. Jesus is coming. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And He talk about rapture and faith. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Let's just read this. Adoption number four. Jeffersonville, give me a few minutes if you cross over a little bit. I just have a few, uh, two more quotes to read. Two more, three more quotes to read. Adoption. 
uh, Jeffersonville, Indiana, 22nd of May, 1960, paragraph 160. Praise God. And quote Brother Branham, 180. Quote Brother Branham, what is it? When you are way out there in redemption with your brand new body, you turn back to a young man together again or a young woman. You're never going to die no more. And you look down on earth and think, I could enjoy some grapes and some good cold water. But you know, I don't need it here. But someday Jesus is coming. And this angelic body, this theophany I'm living in, will not come through the womb of a woman anymore. It will not come through sexual desire anymore. But because that he was born without sexual desire, I'll be resurrected without it. And he will speak someday. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And the body that I once live in, will resurrect it into a glorious, glorified body. And I'll walk and talk and I'll live in and I'll enjoy. Just like, uh, end of quote, just like Job said, in my flesh, in my flesh, in my flesh I shall see God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Only the Holy Ghost bride will be in the rapture. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Only the Holy Ghost. Uh, Abraham and the seed. After him. Last quote. Now, two more. Uh, 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 G, um, Abraham and the seed. Paragraph... Um, Oh, praise God. Uh, paragraph 78. But Jesus come from heaven to earth in a thought. Glory. And the church will be the same way. Pass light with such speed. Glory to God. You said, how can it be done? Jess, how do I know this? Only thing I know now is inches and yards and miles and days. And weeks and hours and minutes. That's the way we figure things out. We are in the womb of the earth. But wait until we are born once on the other side. Glory. Wait until this change come. Yes. Then space from the glory here will come from space to glory here in one split half half instant. Such speed pass right through the wall. Don't even know it's there. There you are. These earthly things will be so simple. Oh my. There ain't nothing to it. Amen. Now we will know that when Jesus comes, we'll be caught up in the rapture. And we know our bodies will have to be changed first. And it wouldn't be more, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't have to be just go back to young women and women. That happens when, uh, interject. That happens when corruption put on incorruption. Amen. That wouldn't happen, not just, just then. We can't, we can't make the rapture with that. He says, you know, we'll just, it wouldn't be just go back to young men and women, but it will be changed because Abraham and Sarah's body had to be changed in a way that they received the promise on. That's Abraham. His body had to be changed to receive the promise on after being justified, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, called by election, manifested Son, manifested God of glory in the midst of him. And then his body was changed in order to receive the promised Son. And when the church shall come to justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, gifts manifested it. Now what? The Spirit of God moving in the church, doing the same works that Christ did before He left as a promise. What's the next thing? The change. The next thing happened to Abraham was it? Change body. He had to have it or you'll never get the Son. And the next thing happens to the church is the rapture. We'll have to be changed and caught up in the air to meet Him. We can't meet Him on the earth. We've got to go in the air to meet Him. It's the coming son, the promised son. Yeah, amen. We look for him now for hundreds of years. He'll come someday. But the next thing for the church is to be changed. We have had every sign. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit, placing of his son, manifested of the, the uh, manifestation of the Spirit. And now what? The changing of the body for the rapture. Amen. Uh, so we will see Jesus. Spoken uh, Washington Thursday, the 12th of July, 1962. Last quote, and we'll be closing. Paragraph 84. Quote by Branham. Sir, we will see Jesus. What more would it be if a man come here with blood all over him and nail scars and things? Jesus, when he comes, every eye will see him. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess when the body of Jesus Christ returns. I believe in his literal coming. Corporal body descending from the heavens with a shout and the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, but the spirit is here with us. And as the church like the pyramid comes into a point, so has the church in the days of Luther and the days of Wesley and the days of Pentecost. And now just before the headstone comes into it, that church has to be honed so perfectly till the same ministry that he did, his same spirit, his same predominance will bring the same body right into it and resurrect the whole thing. That's exactly right. Amen. Glory to God. End of quote. And what is it, brother? You have to come to perfection. You have to come in faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance. You have to become into the stature of a perfect man. 
faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and by love, by the kindness and be full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The rapture is on, brother. We're in between the shout, amen, and the voice of the archangel. You're being transformed into perfection. You're being transformed into the, the, the divine son of the living God. You shall be him walking upon the earth. Why? Because he's in you. You're a vessel. He's in you. You speak the, the, the word like it will flash like light. In 30, 40 days, the power of God is going to be upon you. The world is going to see a, 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 a manifestation of sons and daughters of God. You'll speak the word. The sleeping saints is going to rise. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? For death is swallowed up in victory because he died in the cross and he's living in me by seven spirits. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Shall we pray? Shall we stand? Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, oh, what a joy in our soul to know that the rapture is here, Lord, that we are in the rapture. We are in the second fool of the rapture. Oh, Lord Jesus, we are coming to perfection. Your Holy Spirit is growing in us, Lord. It's coming in us, Lord, bringing us uh, to perfection, bringing us by faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly kindness, seven voices in echoing us. Oh, Lord, bringing us to that rapture in faith that one day, Lord, we will scream out like what uh, in Corinthians, what Paul said, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? For death is swallowed up in the victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. What a promise, Lord. We thank you. We worship you. We praise you. Lord, reach out to your people. They need healing. They need encouragement. They need a sealing. They need a blessing. They need a refilling of the Holy Spirit. They need to be baptized. I thank you that my precious little granddaughter was baptized in your name yesterday, Lord. Amen. Oh, um, no, uh, Friday, I think, Lord. Friday, I'm sorry. Was baptized in your name, O oh Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, I pray that you fill her with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill my Lord. Bring back my, my children to serve it and fill them all with the Holy Spirit. Oh, grant it, Lord God. My, oh, my grandchildren, fill them with the Holy Spirit. Bring them to you, Lord. And Father God, I pray for your people out there, Lord. The pastors who are laboring, Lord, in the vineyard, Lord, anoint them with a special anointing. Bless them with a special blessing. And, oh, great eternal God. Lord, and should you tire, we want to do a Wednesday night service, whatever, uh, Lord, you lead me to do, Lord God. We, If we continue in the, 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 the rapture series, Lord, there's a... Se- there's a, um, there's, a, um, um, there's a six part, Lord, to go on, Lord Jesus. And then the seven part, Lord, we're in the sixth part, is it? Part six. Well, uh, so Lord God, so lead us and show us your divine will. Bless the people, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you, give you peace and joy and meekness and joy. May he bless you during the week, touch you, prosper you. The squeeze is on, brother. The trials are on. The tribulation on. We're in a pre-tribulation period. But just hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Oh, hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the Hem of his garment and his blood uh, made me whole. One more time as we dismiss. It is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. 
There is Jesus in my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garment, and his blood has made me whole. God bless you, believers. Thank you for joining us on Facebook and worshiping with us in Jesus Christ.